Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Shostakovich's 11th Symphony, the year 1905. And I'd like to go through each of the movements, exploring how the themes interact within uh, each of the four movements, and also how uh, this music might be related to the subtitle, the year 1905. Shostakovich wrote his 11th symphony in 1957 and uh, it was premiered that year and uh, became a big success. Um, Shostakovich's reputation uh, seemed to have been uh, rehabilitated by this work. He, he was awarded the Lenin Prize in 1958 and um, it seemed to be a kind of thawing in the Soviet regime's attitude towards him after uh, the Stalinist years. Um, the work is ostensibly about the events of Bloody Sunday, which was the, the Russian 1905 revolution, which seemed to be a kind of foretaste of the Bolshevik revolutions, well, revolution 12 years later in uh, 1917. And um, what happened was um, the people rose up against the kind of uh, aloof uh, Tsar Nicholas II. Uh, they were fed up with the state of uh, the country that they weren't listened to. Russia had recently suffered um, an embarrassing defeat to Japan. Uh, and um, of course there's a lot of poverty and unrest throughout the land. And um, as Stephen Kotkin, the renowned uh, American historian says, on Sunday, January the 9th, 1905, seven days after a besieged Port Arthur fell to Japanese forces, thousands of striking workers and their families assembled at six points in the working class neighborhoods of St. Petersburg, beyond the Narva and Nevsky gates to march on the Winter Palace in order to present a petition to the Tsar Father for the improvement of workers' lives, protection of their rights and dignity by means of the convocation of a constituent assembly. They were led by a conservative priest, carried orthodox icons and crosses and sang religious hymns and God Save the Tsar as church bells tolled. Nicholas II had repaired to his main residence Outside the city, he had no intention of meeting the petitioners. The priest's group got only as far as the Narva Gate, where Imperial troops met them with gunfire. Amid dozens of bodies, the priest exclaimed, There is no God anymore, there is no Tsar. Shooting also halted unarmed marching men, women and children at the Trinity Bridge, the Alexander Gardens and elsewhere. Panic ensued and some petitioners trampled others to death. Around 200 people were killed across the capital that day and another 800 were wounded, workers, wives, children, bystanders. St Petersburg's Bloody Sunday provoked far greater strikes, the looting of liquor and firearm shots and all around fury. So this event in 1905 was looked back um, with a great degree of passion and um, importance, even sentimentality, um, because this harks back to a time before, um, this is a kind of a reminder of why the revolution happened in the first place, without the, the, uh, the things going wrong, of course, subsequently under Stalin, Lenin and Stalin, etc., it's indeed, uh, apparently Shostakovich's father was amongst the petitioners on Bloody Sunday as well. So the events must have had a, an extremely personal significance to Shostakovich. Despite that, it's said that the piece actually, um, and Shostakovich himself alluded to this, is more about the Hungarian Rising, which happened in 1956, the year before this was written. And Shostakovich couldn't really openly... Uh, write about that and use the 1905 revolution as a kind of uh, a guise or a mask. Um, whatever the truth of the matter, um, it's an extremely vivid 
cinematic piece really it's uh there's no abstract structures as such as you find in the tenth symphony uh, and, and other symphonies it's more about describing a story and quite often the movements are rather episodic in describing that and i think the symphony has suffered criticism in some quarters perhaps lacking the interior logic of a you know say the tenth symphony with that huge sonata form movement at the beginning etc but perhaps that's a bit of musical snobbery um it has been described as film music without a film but what's wrong with that film music is great and this symphony is full of great ideas and uh, amazing moments um added to all this the work is um there's about nine folk and workers' songs interweaved into the uh, the symphony, which must have added an extra resonance when this work was uh, premiered. People must have recognised those tunes being played. Um, I will allude to one or two of them, but I, I will just uh, focus on the general structure of each of the movements as we go through. The first movement begins in a rather ghostly, eerie uh, glassy, icy way. Um, we're outside the Winter Palace in the square, the Palace Square. And we begin with this very important idea. It's almost like a motto that recurs throughout um, the symphony. have this timpani solo rather ominous sounding uh, which recurs throughout the work as well this perhaps represents something of the uh, the oppressor of the Tsar himself and his forces <laughs> So that, um, this icy opening and that uh, timpani uh, forms what we might call an A section. This first movement really is, a, there's about three or four ideas which are repeated. And by the way, um, please follow the structure as you listen. I, I've put the description of the bar numbers uh, below. Um, then we have um, these fanfares. I think they're, they're, they're rather Mahlerian. Um, we hear on the trumpet... Um, and then uh, later on we hear the fanfare on the horns, it goes like this. those trumpet fanfares recur throughout the symphony. Um, eventually we get to a new section, it's a similar triplet idea to the fanfares and um, this is one of the folk tunes, it's called Harken um, and it goes like this. Again, like the other ideas in the first movement, it's heard throughout the work. Um, this forms a kind of C section in this first movement. We have a brief return to A, then we hear C again, very this time, developed. And we hear this new idea, which for, it kind of sneaks in on the uh, lower strings, uh, which forms a new section, which I call D, which goes like this. And this is another song, a revolutionary song, uh, called um, Arrestant, it goes like this. And then 
then we return to that icy stillness of the A section and that brings that uh, first movement very much an introduction uh, both uh, in the narrative sense as well of course as the protesters come to the gates of the Winter Palace before the uh, violence begins. The second movement is this the very long uh, movement entitled the 9th of January and this is where the, uh, the atrocity uh, is painted by Shostakovich in music in unforgettable ways. Um, we begin very quickly, we have this rather quick idea. It's kind of uh, ominous rumblings in the low strings. Then we have uh, this idea over the top of that in three, um, which is apparently a song called Oh You Emperor Our Father. It's a rather um, ironic and sarcastic quotation perhaps of this song. And that goes like this. So on. Um, eventually, um, we get to another section where that theme is turned into uh, more of a waltz feel to it. Same melody slightly different feel. We then go back to the icy stillness of the palace square and then the violence begins. The um, the, the SARS troops uh, begin to open fire and we have perhaps what's the most famous part of this symphony, this furious fugato passage. We have this idea in the low strings. <laughs> kind of rages away. Uh, thrilling music. And then we come to this massive climax where they're kind of the people are being slaughtered and we hear dum da 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 the whole orchestra battering out the, these like triplets. Da 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 really thrilling, really terrifying. And then we come to this unforgettable moment where in the midst of that violence suddenly there's dead calm again, and the dead bodies are on the ground. We come back to um, the idea of the, um, of the palace square, that icy stillness, and that ends this mighty second movement. The third movement is called Eternal Memory. It's a kind of memorial to the slain of that day the men, the workers, the women and the children. Uh, and uh, we have this uh, melody based on a, um, a folk song or a, a revolutionary song called You Fell As Victims. And that goes like this, played on the violas. Very beautiful haunting melody and we have this kind of pizzicato almost passicalia effect underneath that. We have a central section, this music's in ternary form, we have a B section, it's rather more like a, a funeral march, slightly Marlarian again. But there's a, you know, a variety of moods in this central section, we, we get this melody as well, again based on a melody, I put a, um, a folk song I think this time. Turn to that uh, funereal tread of the uh, A section. The final movement is called the toxin or the, the alarm. 
and it's based on a theme uh, which is called uh, Rage You Tyrants. Um, you know, a kind of a thumbing the nose at the uh, oppressors. And uh, this music is based on a few ideas which recur. Again, it's very descriptive. Uh, we have this idea at the beginning. Then we have this rather um, lumbering. Then we hear the dun 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 dun. We go back to that main idea. Uh, then we have a contrasting uh, melody, which is actually uh, based on that lumbering idea, that, that dotted dum da dum da dum da dum, which goes like this. And we hear this uh, rather heroic trumpet theme as well. So on. The A and B sections are repeated then, almost like a, an exposition, I guess. But then we have um, a return to that waltz idea. Do you remember from the uh, second uh, movement? Uh, o you emperor, our father. <laughs> and so on. Well, that this time it's repeated kind of throughout the whole orchestra monophonic unison uh, manner, uh, obviously sarcastically uh, kind of praising uh, the Tsar in his murderous ways. Um, textually, uh, it reminds me of that moment in the Fifth Symphony when in the, during the recapitulation of the first movement where the whole orchestra comes in almost as one instrument. It's a, a similar idea. And uh, it's worth mentioning also, there's a lot of the Tenth Symphony, I think, in this movement. We hear these kind of sharp uh, side drum to twos, which is very reminiscent of those kind of passages which are said to represent Stalin from the Tenth Symphony. Um, and then we go back, we have this enormous climax. We have the uh, palace square coming in as a tam-tam. And then we're back to the palace square, the eerie stillness of the palace square. An unforgettable moment in Shostakovich, really remarkable um, orchestration, uh, kind of this sound he's conjured up there, re remarkable. And then we have this riotous ending. Uh, Shostakovich said this is one of his most Russian symphonies, you know, Mazorskian, he said. Uh, and, you know, in the end of this uh, symphony, we have like these, uh, these burbling bass clarinets, um, harking back to the beginning of the second movement, but also these bells tolling. Remember in the, uh, the actual historical event, the, the, the Russian Orthodox Church were chiming bells um, as the, the petitioners went in to the Winter Palace uh, grounds. That, you know, that's such strong symbol of Russia, those bells ringing out and ringing out right to the end of this symphony. Shostakovich 11 is perhaps looked down on sometimes because it's, you know, purely descriptive music and quite often in classical music that's frowned upon, you know, rather stupidly in my opinion, because this symphony is full of great ideas. Uh, it's incredibly exciting. And, um, and it obviously meant a lot to Shostakovich as well. He won the Lenin Prize because of this and his reputation was restored after those years of humiliation uh, under Stalin. Thank you for watching uh, please like and subscribe if there's any other suggestions for pieces you'd like me to look at please put in the comments below. Thank you to Tomas Petraska for suggesting uh, this symphony. Uh, please click uh, like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks very much, bye.